Welcome back to my channel. If you've seen the title of the video, we are answering your questions. Um, I had gotten these on my Instagram probably over a month ago already, and we're just getting around to answering them now. Um, so yeah, we're just going to have them written off here, and we're just going to go in the order that they were asked. Um, first question, what are your thoughts on baptism? Uh, there's uh, some verses in Romans. Romans 6 that uh, I'm going to read, uh, verse 1 through 4. Then what should we say? Should we continue in sin so that grace may multiply? Absolutely not. Not How can, can we who died to sin still live in it? Are you unaware of all that all of us who were baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized unto his death? Therefore we were buried with him by baptism unto death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too may may walk in newness of life. Yeah, there's so many different verses about baptism. Like if you just Google verses about baptism, there's a lot of them. Um, but I know for us, like so long with the background that we come from, we always viewed it as baptism just being something that you did to become a member of the church. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's so much deeper than that and that concept is not even biblical right um yeah it's baptism is an outward symbol of an inward change when we give our life to jesus we become born again um baptism is a symbol of dying to ourselves we we go underwater that is dying to ourselves dying to our flesh and then we come back up a new creation in Christ like that is what it symbolizes and when I realized that it just yeah it just changed my whole view on baptism and it's just so much deeper than just becoming a member of the church yeah, um, for sure so yeah that is you could always google like verses about baptism if you want to learn more about it um, you all seem to love horses and rodeos. Do you all ever dream of owning a ranch? Uh, maybe someday. We dream. Yeah, it's expensive. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if it ever becomes a reality. But yeah, it's something that yeah we both really enjoy. Would you be okay with coloring your hair? Um, personally, I like. I don't really have a preference either way or like I don't know to me it's just something another thing to spend money on um I don't I'm not saying that I ever will or ever will not um and I also yeah I don't know I don't really have a very strong opinion either way I guess what is our favorite show right now we don't honestly watch a lot of shows. No. Um, right. Usually, if we do, it's either Duck Dynasty or there's also recently we've been watching a series called The Cowboy Way. Um, but yeah, we don't we don't watch a whole lot of stuff. Are you a backseat driver? Um, not really. You would probably say I am. I don't know. Maybe a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll admit to it that I am. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> Do you feel like you should keep your hair long now that you don't cover it, or will you cut it shorter? Um, First of all, like, my question is, what is the definition of long? Like, somebody's definition of long could be shoulder length, and somebody else's definition of long could be, like, all the way down to your hips, you know? Um... So yeah, I, I do know that 1 Corinthians 11 says long hair um, are given to her as a glory or for as a covering. Um, but yeah, as far as the definition of long, everybody probably has a different definition of that. What is best advice to give when a person ignores you? And also, how can I fit into a youth group or church setting? Mm, I'd say, yeah, it can probably be hard if you're trying to fit into a group. Um, just, yeah, like, try to be yourself or whatever, and 
don't try to be somebody that they're not just to fit in or whatever and um, you can pray pray about it and just try to be a friendly person and the part where it says when a person ignores you I that can be hard like I don't know if it's a family member or if it's just a friend um but yeah I guess we can the best we can do is love like Jesus does and if they don't want to accept that love then I don't know maybe it, maybe yeah. they're not supposed to be yeah, in their maybe, life yeah you should yeah maybe try to find yeah, other people or whatever to hang out do you all believe there are certain circumstances for divorce or does God expect women to stay in a marriage if there is abuse involved? I mean, yeah, that's a hard question, but I would also say like, um, it's asking about divorce, but it's also be the option of like, if a person is in abuse, abusive marriage should like move out. Yeah. And just... that they don't divorce or whatever. I mean, move out and maybe that would make the other person change yeah um, i feel like that would be a, a better option than just going in uh yeah like file for divorce just move out and maybe that'll change the person and also like if there is abuse like i would and i don't well, know don't, this situation but like don't tell somebody that you trust and like not just keeping it to yourself i don't yeah. think that is very um healthy or safe but and i don't think that god would want that person to stay if they're like if they're being hurt yeah, yeah. i mean i think they yeah they could move out and yeah. see what happens or whatever it's definitely a hard question to answer if you don't know the circumstances but yeah i would just seek godly counsel yeah. and pray about it and maybe yeah maybe it is a situation where you just move out for a while and you know see if that will encourage um your spouse to make changes I grew up in strict brethren and Mennonite faith but I've since left it I've been told different times that I'm condemned to hell because I started wearing pants and cut my hair. What would you all say to that? First of all, um, I have not been able to find scripture that backs that up, that we are condemned to hell if we wear pants or cut our hair. Um, I'd say that, yeah, that's pretty judgmental if they're saying that you're condemned to hell. I mean... We're all going to stand before God. He's the one that's, yeah, going to judge us. And for us humans here on earth, like, we should be showing his love and stuff, not being out, going out and telling people that they're condemned to hell. Like, yeah, I think that's a pretty strong term. Yeah, and we know that the Bible says that, like, there's nothing that we can do to earn salvation. It is a gift from God. And so by us dressing a certain way, that is not going to earn us salvation. Like, um, I I think it's something where we all need to to um, seek God See, about yeah. it and uh, yeah. follow the convictions of the Holy Spirit. And I truly believe, like, the Holy Spirit can give people different convictions when it's not black and white in the Bible. Like, if it's... If it doesn't give us black and white answers in the Bible, like, there's room there for us to seek the Holy Spirit on those kinds of situations or things, I guess. What does the verse mean in 1 Corinthians 11? 1 Corinthians 11, verse 6. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 6. For if a woman doesn't cover her head, she should have her hair cut off. But it is, but if it is disgraceful for a woman to have her hair cut off or her head shaved, let her hair head be covered. What are your thoughts? I'd say, like, the uh, long hair are, the, are, yeah, are the covering. Um, I mean, it's not... 
specifically saying to cover it with a cloth. Yeah. Um, and it does say head be covered. It does not specify hair. It yeah. says our head. Um, I think, yeah, we can make it that a, an idol if we, yeah, I think that, yeah, our, the head have to be covered with a cloth and then, yeah. Yeah, and I think there again, there's room for conviction, like seeking conviction from the Holy Spirit. And if you feel convicted to, to wear a cloth on your head, then I think you should do that. But making sure it's a conviction and not something that you just do to make yourself look better or um, have it to where you view it as something that you have to do in order to be right with God or even come to him in prayer. Last question. So with being a special ed teacher, what are some ideas for rainy day games? Um, yeah, I've never never really interacted with um like special ed children i guess um but as a teacher or somebody who has taught school um we would do like just yeah different activities i don't know if you know like what upset the fruit basket is or um yeah that was one game that came to mind, or where all my sheep, or yeah, those might be a little bit harder to do with um, special ed children like that, but you could also, um, one thing I thought of is maybe Google it, or even Pinterest might have ideas. Um, but yeah, that was all of the questions. I hope, um, it could be helpful for those of you who um, did ask the questions and our goal is always to look at what the Bible says or try to align it with God's word and but we're also like I just want to say this like our convictions or yeah it's not like you should still look to the Bible um, and seek God and not just take our word ask, for it, I guess. Ask the Holy Spirit. To, yeah. yeah you, like, we can see. give our view on it, but we also have to each seek God for ourselves. So, yeah. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.